So a few months ago, I reviewed the Yijing battery. It's ridiculously cheap. I had a few complaints about it, but most people like it. It's actually the most popular battery on my website right now. I sell more of these than pretty much all the other ones combined. But I think I found something better. So this is exactly the same as the last battery, but it's horizontally mounted, which means you can stack them. And one of my four members showed me a picture and I was like, oh my gosh, that is way better. Because guess what? These terminals are on the front, so you can actually connect them like a server rack battery. On the vertical version that I just showed you, you have large cables sticking out the sides and it's really ugly. If you stick them out the back of the battery, then you have to move it away from the wall, which means it takes up more space. On most vertical mount batteries, you have the terminals on the top. That way you can have a conduit box or you have a hole so you can route the cables up the side. Then you can have a conduit box on top again. And this looks a lot nicer. With this, I don't know what they were thinking. But on the horizontal box, you don't have that problem anymore. You can push this up against a wall, it's relatively small, but think about the capacity. With four of these, it's over 60 kilowatt hours. Over here, we have a server rack stack of batteries with six batteries, and this can store 30 kilowatt hours. And it's 24 inches by 32. This is only 17 inches by 29. And if you stack four of these, you get double the capacity. 10 inches tall, 42 inches tall. So if I stacked up four of these, it would be smaller, have a smaller footprint and double the capacity, actually more than double. That'd be 64 kilowatt hours with a little stack of batteries. That's insane. Also, this one has the new JK BMS version 19. And I've been experimenting with it. It's pretty much the same as the older one, but something I don't like is the main screen does not show if it's balancing or not. It shows its charge and discharge and everything else. And I did do a capacity test and it passed pretty nicely. It actually passed better than the one that I had before this, but it's pretty much the same. I don't really see it as that much of an upgrade. Now, one reason these batteries are so cheap is because you have to assemble it yourself. You get this box in the BMS and then these cells come separately. And then you put the cells in the box, you put these bars across, you add the bus bars and then you hook up the BMS and then you fire it up. Most people should have no problem assembling it, but I think they need to improve how they label the parts. And I say this because I burned out another BMS because I did not follow the instructions. So you have these bars that go across the top for the balance lead to connect to the cells. And this is A and this is B. And when I was looking at the instructions, I thought it was supposed to go over here for B and this was supposed to be A. So I destroyed it, just like on the first one. So I think they need to label everything. With A, they need to label here on the box that this is where A goes. And then for B, it should show on the box this is where B goes. Something else that's easy to screw up is the polarity of the cells. So the negative and the positive has to be on the proper side. So be sure to check and triple check before you put these bars on top. And I think they should find a way to label that. It would make the assembly process much faster and easier, and they would probably have less warranty claims. Now let's do a quick price comparison. So the EG4 batteries are pretty expensive now, and you get less capacity. They only have 14 kilowatt hours. And this is the outdoor rated one, but you can get the indoor rated one for cheaper. But again, it's still very expensive. Now the Ruxu is cheaper than an EG4 indoor battery, but it's waterproof. You get more capacity. It's UL listed, it's heated. The communication setup is easier. The BMS is easy to swap out and the build quality is incredible. These are my favorite, but it's $3,000. It's still cheaper than EG4, but that's a lot of money. The Yijing has the same capacity and it's less than $2,000. That's crazy. But the Yijing is not UL listed. So if you're trying to conform to code and get it permitted, you're not gonna be able to do that. But if you want the most bang for your buck, the Yijing is the clear and obvious winner. Now the EG4 and the Ruxus have a circuit breaker and the BMS for overcurrent protection. But the Yijing also has an additional fuse, which is pretty nice. 
Also, it comes with heaters and a fire extinguisher. So it has the same feature set as all of these other batteries, but man, you save $1,000. The one thing that they're missing is that it's not waterproof. So if they could take that horizontal mount battery and make it waterproof, man, that would be sweet. But you can see why everyone's buying these things. They're super cheap. I think it's because the shipping cost. When you ship the cells individually, they save a lot of money because the cells in all of these are pretty much the same. And they're using the same quality bus bars and they're using a higher quality DC rated circuit breaker. They cost more money. What you're really paying for is the UL listing with all of these. The Yijing does not have that. And that costs a lot of money. The moment they get UL listed, they cost more money. The closest 48 volt battery to the Yijing, I would say is the eco-worthy server rack. But again, it's not as cheap as that thing. So that's why everyone's buying them. Also, I did a capacity test and I pulled 325 amp hours. And that was before balancing it. This has an active balancer and it took a whole day to balance it but I pulled more than full capacity on the first cycle, which is a good sign. Now for the last few months, I've been testing this battery with this large 10,000 watt SRNE inverter, and it's been working really well for large loads like charging my Tesla, but now it's connected to a tiny home and it doesn't use that much power because it's running some cameras, some lights, and a mini split. So for most of the day, it's only drawing one and a half to two amps which means that when it tries to calculate the state of charge, it's almost always wrong. So this battery, when you draw it nice and slow over the course of a week, it will show that it's at 50% state of charge, even though it's at 0% state of charge. I never noticed this before because I was cycling it very hard with solar. But now that I'm cycling it very slow with this tiny home and then charging it up once a week with this battery charger, the state of charge is all over the place. This is a common problem with JK BMS and most other BMSs, but it's profound on this one. Like it is totally off. Now, if you draw a lot of current, this thing tracks the state of charge just fine. So it's only if you draw a small amount of current only. Besides that, everything else has been running perfectly, especially with the Tesla. I mean, think about it. You can build a system with an SRNE inverter and one of these batteries and you can level two charge a Tesla for so cheap. That's crazy. It's literally a fraction of what it cost last year. It's like cut in half now. It's, it's wild. And that's pretty much it for this video. Pretty solid batteries. I really like these. If you ever have problems with them, we have a thread on the forum so you can complain about them. But so far, everybody's been liking them a lot. Also, if you have any issues with assembling the battery, please let us know. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.